Hi guys, Harry here from the Art Gear guys. Thanks very much for joining me today. Well, as you can see here, I've got another review for you, and this time it is another uh, pencil from Brunzel. Uh, Brunzel is a Dutch company. Uh, they kind of under the same banner, uh, Royal Talons. Um, if you go on to the, I'll have a link to the Royal Talons website. If you go onto their website, you'll see that they have a huge, a vast range of art supplies from watercolors and things like that, and uh, pens, paintbrush pens, uh, all, all manner of products. Uh, and when you go onto their website and you see a lot of the products, you'll probably recognize a lot of them, but not realize that they were under the the banner of Royal Talons. Uh, Brunzel is one of those companies. Now, I I done a review of the uh, Brunzel design pencil, color pencil, a while ago. I actually have their the, the uh, watercolor pencil in that range and the pastel pencil in that range, the design range, which is uh, from what I'm led to believe that's their top of the you know that's their top line artist quality pencils. Um. I actually enjoyed the, the design pencil. I got on very well with it. Um, unfortunately, when I was doing that review, it was before I started doing artwork with the, the the products that I was reviewing. So I didn't actually get a chance to do anything constructive with it. Uh, I was just doing the swatches. But anyway, um, I've wanted to do this. This is the uh, Bronzeal Reichs Museum. I think I'm pronouncing that right. But... I spoke to uh, one of the representatives from Brunzel and basically what what they they have done with this particular range, and there's not very many pencils in this range, um, they done a collaboration with the famous Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam uh, where there's so many great uh, Dutch artists paintings hanging uh, in there. Um, and on the tins of a lot of these different sets, you will see some very famous Dutch paintings, like this one here is the Night Watch. Um, the other set that they have in the color pencil range, so this is the 50 set, they also have a 24 set, and that's it, but I'll get more into the sets in a second. Uh, uh, for the 24 set, uh, they have the painting of the Milkmaid, then they have a, a set of watercolour pencils, which is a 24 set, and that is a self-portrait of Van Gogh. And then they have a um, like a, a, a 12 set of graphite pencils, and that is a self-portrait of Rembrandt. Now, the only reason why I mentioned the watercolour, because I wouldn't ordinarily do that, is because... They fall on, all all four of those sets fall under this collaboration with the museum uh, that Brunzel have entered into. Now I know from talking to people in the past that a lot of people have bought these pencils or wanted to buy these pencils based on the artwork on the tins. And some uh, there was a lady contacted me the other day saying, you know, I bought this tin based because I loved the artwork. And it was silly of me to do that. And I personally don't think it's silly at all. The reason why companies make their packaging um, pleasing and aesthetically pleasing to, to us, the consumer, is, is to get us to, to buy the products. And so, you know, it, it has worked. And especially if you're an artist and you see a particularly beautiful piece of art on the tin, it is going to draw you in, whether you like it or not. Um, some people can resist that and some people can look at it from a more logical perspective and, and other of us uh, don't, don't necessarily look at things like that. Um, when I first started getting into colour pencils, I looked at, I'd seen this particular set of pencils and I had looked at the artwork and, and that was what drew me to the pencils. That was before I even knew what Brunzeal was or what pencils they had. And, you know, I didn't know much about colour pencils in any case. Anyway, let's get into the actual review. So, um, as I mentioned to you, there's not many pencils in this in this particular range. There's this 50 set, and then there is a 24 set. I'll have the prices to these sets over on the Art Gear Guide, as I always do on the written review, and I'll have them for as many different countries as I can gather the, the price range up for. But they're not very expensive. 
Uh, on the back of the tin, uh, they have like a little swatch down at the bottom here of the colors that's inside the tin. And then you can have a look there, and this is the, 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 the three other sets um, that I mentioned earlier to you that are in this particular range. I've used these obviously on, on I've done some artwork with these. Uh, the image that you're seeing here is just a quick um, bit of art that I've done with them. Um, but when I was doing the artwork, I don't... I tested the pencils on lots of different papers. I'd done them on Bristol Vellum, uh, color pencil, Strathmore color pencil paper. I'd done it on um, Strathmore Bristol Smooth 400 series. Uh, when it came down to the artwork, I wanted to do it on a uh, on a um, a Strathmore Bristol Vellum 300 series paper. Uh, but I had when I'm testing the the, the pencils, um, I've got little bits of um, like A4 paper cut into smaller bits just so that I can, I'm not wasting big sheets of paper whenever I'm testing. But when I started this 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 artwork, I'd realized that I'd lifted up a Bristol Smooth 400 series. And whilst I could have stopped because I realized quite early on that it was the, the smoother paper, and I could have stopped and just started all over again. I just thought to myself, you know what? Actually, I'll just keep going with it because if the if the artwork turns out okay and the tests that I want to do during the artwork turn out okay, then it will be quite a a, a a good test for these pencils given how smooth the paper is. So, um, as you can see here, the, the, the different colours that are available in the set. I think actually with this 50 set, and I know that's an odd number because we're, we're, as colour pencil artists, we're, we're used to like 12, 24, 36, 48, 72. I can't think of another company that has a set of 50. Um, not, not, not any of the big companies. I know there's some kind of, um, I know there's, with the exception of Holbin, actually. Holbin have got a 50 set. Uh, so I just contradicted myself there. Uh, then under that there is a another set of pencils and you can see the the colors that are available there as well the only um, the only criticism I, I would have about the the palette selection is that there's very very little in the way of flesh tones so if you're a portrait artist I wouldn't particularly say this would be a good set for you, but uh, anything else, um, you, you've got a really nice selection of greens, blues, purples, pinks, uh, reds, uh, a nice selection of oranges as well, nice autumn colours. Uh, we've got some uh, browns here, that type of thing, but I'll show you those in the swatch in a second. And um, a few greys, there's two warm greys and two cool greys. Okay, so if we look at the pencil itself, it's a very minimalistic pencil. Now, some people um, are okay with that, others not so much. It is um, a 3.8 millimeter core, so it's it's pretty average, and it's a 7 millimeter barrel. It's a hexagonal barrel. Uh, along, as you can see here from the the images, it's just the barrel. All barrels have got this black matte finish on it, and then at the very end, there's a three quarter inch pigment uh, identifier which just lets you know uh, the color the, the core pigment um, along one side of the barrel all there is is the brand of pencil which is in this case Reich's Museum uh, by and then it says the company name by Brunzel and that is it there's nothing else on these pencils nothing about uh, color ref like a uh, color name or color reference number nothing like that now, because these pencils aren't sold up in stock, it's not a big deal that there's no uh, color reference number or anything like that because you're not going to be buying them individually, so you don't have anything to reference them. The name inside of things, for people that are uh, partially in, um, impaired vision or color blind, because I know that there's one artist here um, on YouTube who is uh, partially impaired vision, and I think there's another person who's uh, colorblind, they rely heavily on the, the, the pigment names being on the barrels. But with the exception of, of people who, who have these uh, disabilities, 
having the pigment names, I think now because there's so many different colored pencils out there on the market, having the, and you know, you can pick up six different brands of colored pencils, uh, pick up the, the exact same color out of each brand, and they'll probably all have different names for that color. So the pigment names, I, I'm not 100% sure if they're really that important. Uh, but they are nice definitely to have on the on, on the pencils and the reason why I say they're not really that important is because you're going to do a swatch out of them in any case obviously if the set is sold up in stock then it's vital to have a number or a reference number or the pigment name for obvious, obvious reasons when you're reordering okay so just quickly um, this is the the swatching out of the, the colors as I mentioned earlier on when I showed you the pencils you can see that there's a really nice selection of pinks and reds, uh, oranges, yellows. It's it's quite widespread. It, the, I think they've got a good selection of the, the main colours that you're going to want, it, with the exception of flesh tones, like I said earlier on. So if you really enjoy portrait um, work with your colour pencils, I really wouldn't recommend this particular set. But anything else, you're going to be able to get a really nice selection of colours. Okay, so uh, as I always do, I do these little tests as as well as the um, the artwork. Now, like I said the earlier on, I done I tested them. I layered these pencils on Bristol Vellum, Bristol Smooth, um, the Strathmore color pencil paper. I done the, a test on some black paper, which I'll show you in a second, and I also done uh, it on some watercolor paper as well, 140 pound uh, hot press watercolor paper. In terms of the layering, no problems whatsoever. They, these pencils layer very well. Now I don't get into whether a pencil is wax based or oil based because I've, I've mentioned this many times before. Um, I've spoke to oh, via email and stuff like that. There are a lot of the chemists that work for different color pencil companies. Um, and they have confirmed that a lot of the pencils have both ingredients oil and wax in them and it just depends some might have a little bit more oil than others some might have a little bit more wax than others there's lots of different types of waxes that they use as well uh, so that can have an effect on the pencil that can make it feel a little bit more oily but it's it's the wax this particular wax that's making it oily not that it's an actual oil based pencil if you understand what I mean so I try to stay away from that type of classification and try to um, explain it the best way that I feel how the pencil feels whenever I'm using it. So in all the papers that I just mentioned they, they, these pencils layered very very well indeed. Um, with the artwork that I've done I actually used the odorless mineral spirits quite a bit. Now I personally don't use the odorless mineral spirits in my own personal work but I know that a lot of you guys do, and so I felt that it was important that I started uh, um, using the odorless mineral spirits in the artwork process as well, just to give me a better understanding. Although I do odorless mineral spirits testing, I didn't really feel that it was enough to be able to comment one way or the other properly. So I've done I've done that with the artwork, and the pigments work really well with the odorless mineral spirits. So as you can see here in this top row, and I'll have some images coming up so you can get to see it a little bit better. The top row here is one light application, middle row is five light applications, and then the bottom row here is one heavy application. I always select the same colours, and as you can see here, the black is really quite nice and rich. Um, I've done a little bit of blending here. So you can see here on the top one, I've just got a blue and a yellow. Again, there's no pigment name, so I've got no idea what type of blue or type of yellow it is. Um, but you can see here it's cre created a, na uh, a really nice green. The same here with the red and yellow, it's created uh, a really nice orange. Now I've got two spheres down here which I've done uh, and I'm going to kind of blend them out a little bit for you while I'm here so you can get to see. Uh, the blue one I'm going to do just a, a like a, a dry blend so I'm going to use um, a blender pencil for that and with the red one I'm going to use some odorless mineral spirits just so that you can see it and I know you'll be able to see it in the artwork but it, you know this might help you understand a little bit better okay so uh, I, I've got a Prismacolor blender here I think it is and I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to 
work from the um, the light area out to the darker areas. Now I'm just doing this quite quick. Obviously, if you were doing this uh, on a piece, you would take a lot more time. But as this is uh, like a review video, I don't want to spend too long just blending here. But you can see here that the pigment is 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 blending really nicely onto this paper. Now this is watercolor paper that I've used here. Um, one thing I will say about these uh, these Brunsdale Reichs Museum pencils, when I was using them, there was like um, a, a nice silky smooth feel to them when I was using them on the paper. And when I started using them, I, I kind of thought because there were the, there was a softness, like a mid-level softness to them, and um, th they had that silky smooth texture that they weren't going to hold a point very well, but they did. They, and all the pencils as well, when it came to sharpening, uh, they sharpened incredibly well. And there was a uh, an occasion where I actually dropped two pencils just from my desk height, so not very far but it was on a wooden floor nonetheless and um, when it came around to sharpening them there was no breakage or damage or splinting or anything like that in the actual barrel of the pencils so they held up quite well to that um, with regards to um, actually using the pencils I found them a little bit crumbly um, when, when you started putting a little bit of pressure on them. So when you sharpen them and you, you're just using them uh, with a really, really light hand, there's not very much, in fact, there's no crumbling. But when you start getting down to a slightly um, more robust core point uh, and you start putting a little bit more pressure on them, they do become a little bit more crumbly, um, if that's even a word, crumbly. But it's... Um, <sighs> It's a little bit more crumbly than most pencils, but nothing too drastic, if you understand what I mean. It's, it, it, the core doesn't start crumbling away. It's just you do get a little bit of crumbling, so you'd ha you have to be a little bit aware of it. Um, so Because the last thing you want to do is get little bits on your artwork. Um, like I've done here with the, the Blender pen pencil, little bits have crumbled on, on the, the sphere there, and I've just gone ahead and kept blending over it rather than getting rid of it. But so the, there's the uh, sphere and that's just the, the dry blending. So now I'm going to use some odorless mineral spirits. And this, the, the odorless mineral spirits that I use is Zested. I'll have a link for it down below in the description if you feel you want to go and get some. Um, and so I'm just going to do the same, work with the same process, just working my way out from the light area into the darker area. I think actually, like I, like I said earlier on, this isn't really... Um, I, I personally, whenever I'm doing my own artwork and stuff like that, I don't use odorless mineral spirits. I prefer to just do blend the, the pencil with a, a lighter color or a, a pencil blender like I've just done here. But um, when I was doing the artwork, the, the, the pigment actually reacted really nicely to, or the core, not the pigment, the core uh, reacted really nicely to the... Um, to the odorless mineral spirits, uh, it broke down really nice and gave me a nice consistency to work with and move about. It's not really doing that here, but I think that's more to do with the brush I'm using here because it's very soft. It's a very soft brush. But there you can see, uh, this one here is done with odorless mineral spirits and this one here is done with dry blending. Okay, so as I always do, uh, I just give you a brief demonstration of the pencils on black paper. So I've just got the usual colours here, red, yellow, green and blue, and 
the the white as well just so that you can see it on the black paper I'm actually just using it here but I'll also have an image of this come up on your screen after uh, and you'll be able to get a, a, a closer look at it sometimes when I'm doing it here with the camera um, the the lights that I have give off a lot of glare but you can see they're crumbling now I'm not using super heavy pressure um, and but you can see there the the type of crumbling that I'm talking about so let me see if that'll focus in properly because I've gone way in there there you go so you can see there the the crumbling and like I say that's not really heavy pressure um, so I've got this blue it's kind of like a light blue and so straight away there I would say that the first two uh, colors the red and the yellow are quite translucent and the the blue here so far is, is really quite opaque um, now we're onto this green I would say the green's a little bit harder to call maybe a little translucent and then I've got the, the white here as well. Now I was actually quite impressed with the this white pencil. But again, you can see the crumbling there as soon as it started. And there we have it. So that's the the colours there on black paper, that's just Windsor Newton black paper. Uh, it's the same paper I use on all the black, uh, the colour, like the darker paper tests that I do for you. Okay, so to kind of like summarise this review. This isn't the set of pencils that uh, you're going to use for like uh, a commission or anything like that. A lot of people I think get hung up on this light fast issue. And you absolutely need to be hung up on it whenever you're talking about doing commissions for people. It's pro probably the most, one of the, certainly one of the top three things that you need to be looking for when it comes to doing colour pencil artwork uh, for a commission piece or something that's going to go into a museum or go into a, an exhibition, something like that. Life Fast is obviously right up there, right at the very top. But for widespread colour pencil artists like myself that just love doing art for myself, or uh, adult colouring book artists, um, crafters, people like that, light fast isn't such a big issue. So for if you're looking a set of colour pencils to do a commission piece with, this would not be the set. But for anything else, they're a really nice set of pencils. Um, in terms of the quality of the actual pencil, the core of the pencil, like I said, there's kind of like a silky smoothness to the core, uh, but it's not super soft. It's not like Prismacolor soft or anything like that. It's it's what I would call a mid-level softness. There's also um, the, the 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 actual pigment in these pencils is really rich, deep, and and for the most part, when or when you're doing it on white paper, there's kind of like an opaqueness to it. I know with those black results there there was three of them I think were translucent and the blue was really quite opaque uh, and the white was really nice and opaque as well so they worked really well with odorless mineral spirits I like I say I used the the Bristol smooth for the artwork that I've done uh, Bristol uh, Strathmore 400 series Bristol smooth and um, you will be able to see even though it's a, sp a sped up piece of art you will be able to see um, the because there was very very little to no tooth on that paper, when the odorless mineral spirits was put onto the pigment, you could see it was a little bit streaky. But as I said, that was more to do with the paper not having any tooth for it to go into, that type of thing. 
Um, but the streakiness kind of like disappeared once it dried. So it was, wasn't really an issue. It certainly wasn't an issue in the end result of the artwork. Um, it is only, I only spent, I think it was two hours on this particular piece of art uh, because I've got an awful lot of reviews to do and I don't want to be spending like 15 or 12 or 15 hours in total on artwork for the reviews because if I do that, I'm only going to be getting maybe one review out a month and I don't want to do that. Um, but at the same time, I, I still want to be producing some sort of artwork for you to show you the the, the the product working um, but I really enjoyed using these pencils uh, I think they're well worth the money uh, like I say the prices will be over on the art gear guide they are not very expensive pencils at all um, I think a lot of people would enjoy using these they sharpened incredibly well I had no problems with them whatsoever which tells me that the wood being used uh, in the barrel is good wood uh, sometimes if you you can tell when they're really cheap bad quality wood is being used because it'll it'll splinter or when you're sharpening it it'll kind of like nick it'll stop halfway around and, and you get that like dragon of the blade which I know sometimes it's got to do with the blunt blade but also as well if the wood is bad you'll get that um, anyway guys that that's my review um, of the Brunzel Reichs Museum colored pencils. Don't forget I've got a written review. You can go across, you'll be able to see the prices. I have a lot of links on the written review, but I'll also have links down below to where you can purchase these pencils or whatever you want. You can also go across, I've got a link to the Royal Talons website. Go across, take a little look at their website and see the vast array of products that they do, but you'll be able to get a little bit more information. Well not more information but you'll be able to see these pencils over there um, and you'll I think there's a little bit of a write-up about the actual artwork that's on all four sets like I explained to you earlier on but I think it goes a little bit more in depth over there I think they, they explain a little bit about why they collaborated with the museum that type of thing that's it guys thank you so much for watching this review um, now that I'm going to be doing live streams as well, um, I have a, a newsletter, which I've, it's always been on the website for you to subscribe to, but I've never really had events or anything like that that I wanted to put in the newsletter so that going out, it gives you a rundown of what's coming up in the following, in the coming month. But I've done that now, and because I'm now planning ahead, and I know what reviews I'm going to be doing like next month and the month after that, uh, and what comparison because I'm going to be starting to do a comparison video every month as well and I'm going to make sure that uh, the live streams are at least two a month but if you go across to the um, the art gear guide website and you sign up to the newsletter at the beginning of the month you will get uh, a newsletter just telling you um, what the, the, the next live streams are going to be also telling you what reviews are coming up that month and what comparison videos i'm going to be doing as well and uh, if there's anything else i'll put it in your newsletter as well anyway guys thank you so much and i look forward to seeing you all again next time bye